Hey what's up, it's Chris from Rooker Films and in today's video I'm going to show you this really cool lower third inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now once you have Premiere Pro loaded up and you're ready to go we need to begin by creating a brand new legacy title. So we'll go into file new legacy title, we'll press OK on this window and we'll just extend this title window out. Now we're just going to begin by typing out a name and then we'll just change the font, we'll change the weight of the font, we'll change the color to white and then we'll just increase the size so this is nice and bold then we'll just center this up. Now from here we'll exit the title window and we'll drag title one on to the sequence. Now from here we'll just move this up a little bit so we've got room to add more text underneath this so we'll go up to position and we'll pull the position up to around 440 and then we'll go ahead and create a brand new title. So file new a legacy title and then we'll just create a brand new text layer again so we'll create a brand new text layer and this time we're going to type out the role so it's going to be Chris Brooker and video creator but of course change the details to fit your specific needs. And once you're happy with this we can drag the text onto video layer 2 inside of our sequence. And there we go, we've got a very basic lower third on screen. So we're just going to change the positioning of this and we'll change the scale of this if we need to. But from here, we need to go ahead and create a line separating the name and the title. So we'll go ahead and create a brand new black video. So new item, black video. We'll drag the black video onto video layer three. And then we'll go into the effects tab, search for tint. And then we'll drag tint onto the new black video. In tint, we're going to change the black, so we'll map the black to a brighter color. So in this example, I'm going to choose a nice yellow. And then inside the motion tab, we'll uncheck the uniform scale option, meaning we can change the scale of the height and the width separately. We'll pull the height all the way down to 1 or even 0.5. And then we'll position this up just in between the name and the title. And then of course, we can change the width. And then as soon as you're happy with this, we can begin the process of animating this on and off screen. So we're going to begin by animating the name on. So select the name. So that's title one. We'll go over to the opacity window and press the new rectangle mask. And as you can see, this rectangle mask has been generated. And then we just want to extend this rectangle mask all the way out so that it completely fills the name. And then we can go ahead and create a brand new keyframe on the mask path. Now scroll back maybe five or six keyframes and then we'll pull this mask all the way to the left making sure the name is no longer visible. And then of course in the mask we can just pull down the mask feather just so that this doesn't blur. Now when we play this back you can see that this text layer animates on and that looks really awesome. I'm really happy with that. So now we can go ahead and we can animate the title so that's the video creator title on underneath the name. So we're going to go ahead and create a brand new keyframe on the position for this title and then we'll scroll back maybe three or four keyframes and we'll pull the position of this down but just a little bit. You don't want this to be off screen, you just want to pull this down just a little bit on the frame. We'll pull the cursor head back maybe another three or four frames and then we'll pull the position of this title up so it's just at the top of the name text. Now from here we'll trim the start of that title so we'll press C on the keyboard to load up the razor tool and cut the text near the beginning where this text starts to move into position and then we'll delete the first part of that video and when we play this back you can see this title bounces in as the name is wiping in. So of course that only leaves us with the line not animated so we're going to go ahead and create a brand new keyframe on the position for this line that is the shape layer and then we'll go back in time maybe three or four keyframes. We're going to add a bounce to this so pull this over to the right just a little bit go back in time another three or four keyframes and then we'll pull this all the way to the left so this line is completely off screen. Now when we play this back as you can see the line bounces in at the same time as the two text layers animate on and of course if you want this line to come in a little bit slower then all you have to do is extend the gap between the keyframes. Now I'm super happy with that but the problem is this isn't a lower third this is a huge text layer in the middle of the screen so we need to reduce the scale of this. But the problem is because all of these individual layers are animated separately, if we just move everything over to the corner, it's going to look really weird and really ugly and it's going to mess up the animation. So that means we're going to have to nest all of these layers as one separate video. So select all of the layers, 
press right or double click and then we'll go up to nest. You can rename the nested sequence to lower third and then all three of those layers have been transformed into one video layer. So selecting this video layer, we can go up into the motion tab, we can reduce the scale and we can position this into the bottom left corner. And when we play this back, we've got this really cool lower third animating on in the bottom left corner. And there you go, you're basically finished with this lower third. The only thing we need to worry about now is animating this lower third back off screen. So double click on the nested video layer. That should load up the nested sequence so we can see our three different layers again now. Find a point that you want to animate this lower third off. We'll start with the line, so we'll create a brand new keyframe on the position. Scroll across maybe four or five keyframes and pull this all the way to the right. Now pull the cursor back in time, we'll go down to title two. So that is the video creator text, create a brand new keyframe on position. Go ahead, maybe three or four keyframes again, and we'll pull this all the way down so that this is off screen. And now we'll do the same thing again for the name, create a brand new keyframe on the mask path, scroll forward maybe three or four keyframes, and then we're just going to update this mask path so that the text is completely removed. Now when we play all of this back together, this looks great, however the video creator is a little bit too late. So we're just gonna pull these keyframes over to the left a little bit. And when we play this back, there we go, that looks really cool. So if we go back into our original sequence and we see the nested sequence in the bottom left, we can see the title comes in and then after four seconds, it animates back out again. And there you go. That is how you create a really awesome lower third inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. And there you go. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please do let me know in that comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and check out the previous video if you want to see more. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next episode.